This is the Bold City Podcast. Hey, welcome to the Bold City Podcast. I'm Jason Masters, the lead pastor at Bold City Church. I want to welcome you. Thanks for joining us. Hey, I want to remind you that you can find this podcast anywhere you can find podcasts, Spotify, iTunes, where, wherever you can find them, YouTube as well. And listen, if you hear anything you, you enjoy or you like, we would love for you to like it. And uh, we would also love for you to share it if you think it could impact anyone else. Send it to your friends, send it to your family, send it to whoever you want to send it to if it blesses you and you believe it'll bless them. Well, today uh, he's been on here before. He is an incredible man, a uh, great man of God. I really am thankful for this guy. Uh, he is an elder in our church, and uh, we consider him our resident theologian, although <laughs> he laughs at that. And will you guys, uh, can I welcome you and uh, introduce you to Adam Triggers, for those of you who don't know. What up, man? Hey, man. How are you? Thanks good. for having me. I'm good. I'm yeah. good. I'm, you're really good. People don't understand the last 30 minutes that the rest of us have had with you. <laughs> so you're coming in hot. So this is awesome. You are um, encouraged to talk about this. First off, I'm going to go ahead and date this. We never do it. This is October 17th, 2023. We are 10 days into the Israel war with Hamas. And yeah. uh, just been a lot of conversation and a lot going on uh, with that. And so uh, anyway, I'm dating it so people understand why we're bringing this up. And uh, you have studied a ton, ton on revelations in time stuff. But for me, uh, I would love to start this conversation off with the importance of Israel. Like, why is Israel important? Uh, what does this mean for an American Christian church? Um I'd love to kind of talk through some of that. Something I'm realizing in millennials and even younger generations, we don't really understand the importance of Israel and why Israel's important, why Jewish people are important. Everyone's important. Let me clarify that. Palestinians are important as well. But the place that Israel and Jewish people have in the heart of God. And so... Yeah. I hope we can enlighten them and encourage them because the goal for me would be, man, to pray, to give, to, to fast, to proclaim, to declare, um, to stand with Israel. And also, before we roll too, I think it's important for people to know that Jewish people are overly receptive of Christians um, right. for a number of reasons. But one is because we basically disappeared on them in Holocaust. Yeah. And persecuted them and um, and tried to wipe them off the face of the planet. So um, so they have good reason. They have really good reason that their heritage, their family, that their uh, grandparents, great-grandparents were murdered mm -hmm. by Christians, which right. is crazy. Right. If we, you know, if we had the uh, proper understanding of God's chosen people, of the Jews, it would have been the church standing between Germany and the Jews. Um, instead, we stood aside, and I mean we, the church, we stood aside and let uh, the Holocaust play out against the Jews without really having a voice in it, without saying, no, this isn't okay. Um, and it's because we just don't have a proper, we don't have a proper view of who they are in God's eyes. Right. And so that's, that's what I hope we can um, establish here today and that the church will, will uh, come around to as well, that the Jews are important people. Yeah, and so when you say we, you're not necessarily talking about us because we weren't alive then. Right. But you're saying in general, like our faith, our church leaders that came before us. That's right. Yeah. Um, I was watching something this past weekend that was just talking about how many churches, when um, when Jews were going to literally be slaughtered, how many churches they passed on the way. Yeah. It's just incredible, church after church after church. That's and, right. Uh, so when Christians show up today at their doorstep with a cross and a Bible, you know, you can kind of understand why they go, what are you doing here? Yeah. Like, and we don't want to hear what you have to say, right? Because there's that history. Yeah. And if you don't know that history. You don't understand. You don't understand yeah. at all. Right. So um, why should Israel be important um, to an American Christian today? Yeah. So um, you, you already had your Bible turned um, to Genesis chapter 12, right? where God chose a man, Abraham. Of course, there wasn't Hebrews then. Abraham was not a Hebrew. 
but um, from Abraham, he chose a line. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we trace that to I, from, from Abraham to Isaac, Isaac to Jacob. Jacob's name is changed to Israel from him, 12 sons. And from that line, we have Jesus, right? And along that history, throughout the Old Testament, there were promises made to those people, to Israelites that became to be called Jews. They weren't always called Jews, Israelites or Hebrews, right? Um, but God made promises to them. And for us to accept that he can break those promises to them, well, wouldn't that kind of put our own faith in question? No doubt. Right? If he can break his promises to Israel, why then wouldn't he be able to break his promises to us? Over and over again, he promises to do things for Israel. And um, it's important for us to kind of be familiar with those things and to see God working those things out and be and, and then just be okay with it, right? And so kind of what I'm referring to then is there's this idea, um, what's called replacement theology, where people will preach or teach that the church has become Israel, Hmm. so that God is done with Israel, he has set them aside, and now he will still fulfill those promises, but he's going to fulfill it to this church rather than to the, to the Jews or to Israel. And um, that's, it's just wrong. You know, it's just wrong. Um, and we see it in the New Testament, but we're kind of taught to, we're taught to read over it. Mm -hmm. um, or we're taught to read ourselves into it so that when the New Testament especially is talking to Israel or to Jews, we just put ourselves there. We put the church there. Mm -hmm. um, and then what we do is if we can do that, then we go back and we look at uh, the Old Testament. We do the same thing. So I'll give you a good example that I think a lot of people will be um, familiar with. The Valley of Dry Bones. Mm-hmm right? Uh, we, we preach it for revivals, right? Yeah. We preach it about future resurrection, right? We preach it about the church. Never do we preach it about the Jews. Never do we preach it about Israel, when if you just read it, that's all it's about. Yeah. It's literally about resurrecting a dead nation, resurrecting the nation of Israel. That's what it's about. Israel was dead. They were gone. They were not in their land. In Isaiah, I'm sorry, Ezekiel 37, the prophecy of dry bones is about bringing them back into their land. And when we don't recognize it uh, as being about Israel, we completely miss that that prophecy is being fulfilled as we speak. That since 1948, right. millions have returned to Israel, where there was just a couple of thousand in 1948. Now there's 7 million Jews living in Israel. Which is insane. It's yeah. insane. It's completely insane. But we don't even look at it as prophecy fulfilled. Yeah. We don't look at it as God keeping his promises because we're conditioned to read it about ourselves or to read it about some future event that means the resurrection of the church or resurrection of believers. When if you just, if you just read it without that concept in your mind, it's about Israel. And it's an easy text to preach because it's inspiring it's and inspiring. it's hope-filled. Yeah. And so it's real real easy to make yeah. that portion of Scripture about you. That's exactly um, right. Something else I'd love to piggyback on um, in regards to what you say about Jews coming back home. Think about this in the past 10 days. How many have went back, yeah. have left to mm -hmm. go back to fight for the homeland? Yeah. And so, like, in the past 10 days, there's just been a mass like i have a i have a flight flight tracking app on my phone you mm -hmm. know about yeah, we talked about it last yeah. week yeah. so I, I watch um you know because sometimes they'll show you like the different military flights that are flying around gaza and israel so anyway i was watching them and it was insane uh it was a couple days ago maybe maybe three or four there's just a line like a train of flights that were coming in that were israeli airlines that were flying in and there was a report on the news about how many israelis were flying home to to serve their country and i just looked at that train and i was like god there's probably at least 150 seats on every single one of them and yeah. and, uh, and i haven't seen any reports I, at this time i don't know but i bet you there's thousands of jews who have went home in the past 10 days right 
there was, uh, you know, when the conflict broke out between Russia and the Ukraine. You know, I was getting all types of questions about how does this relate to end times. Sure. And people kind of get aggravated when I was like, oh, it might not be anything to do with it. It might not have anything to do with it at all, right? Well, because that's not exciting. It's, it's not, not exciting. exciting. That's, that's not exactly exciting. right. But here's what is exciting, and here's what I started sending. I started watching Israeli news and reports about Jews leaving Ukraine to go where? Back to Israel. Back to Israel. I started watching reports about Jews leaving Russia to go back to Israel. And then I can say, now we have... Now we have something significant to end time, because that is an end time prophecy. When you look at Ezekiel 37, you start really with 36. Ezekiel's told to prophesy to the land. Speak to the land, son of man, is what it says. And he promises all this good about the land. And if you just look at it, it's happening. It will be mo more fruitful than it ever was. And if you just read, Mark Twain wrote something about um, Israel back in the 1800s, and he basically says, why does anyone fight over this land? It's, it's, it's ridiculously barren. Not even the cactus like to grow here, mm. right? And now it's fruitful, and, and it's an exporter of food and plants and shrubs, and they have more trees today than they did 100 years ago. They have wineries. They have seaside resorts. They have a, a ski resort on Mount Hermon. You know, Israel has blossomed, prophecy fulfilled. But you have, you know, this, these prophecies, 36 and 37, and then you get into 38, 39, this Gog-Magog war. But, but the point is, before that, the people come back. And so when these things start happening, that's one of the things I look at. I don't look at what nation is fighting against Israel, what nation might come against Israel. I look at, are Jews returning home? Do we have more Jews going home? Because that's significant. That, that's a, that's mm -hmm. a prophetic word. And so you can, you can look at what you just said and these other events where Jews start ma amassing in Israel. That's, that's something that's, um, that's super exciting on the prophetic world stage. Yeah, you know? that is. That is. And so for an in times thing, um, this should be important to us mm -hmm. as, uh, you know, American Christians, the return of Christ, like yeah. this should be important and this should be exciting it's like wow not not that israel's at war but that i mean that's part of it but wow look at how many israelis are going home how many jewish people are going home yeah that's exactly um, right and so anyway you were talking we were talking earlier too you alluded to genesis 12 where my bible is um and you're talking about the covenant that god made with abraham can you continue to just kind of expound on that Yes, so that particular promise um, in the first few verses of Genesis chapter 12 is um, there's a specific line in that that becomes important to us as Gentiles because it says, in you, all the families of the world will be blessed. In Abraham, somehow this works out where all the families, not just Abraham's children and not just the children that come through Isaac and Jacob, all families. And so, of course, we know in hindsight, we can look back and go, that's Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's the coming of the Messiah. That's Jesus who came through that line. In fact, um, Romans 9, 4, Paul speaking specifically about, the Israel, about Israel. This is one of those passages that Gentiles just can't put themselves in. It literally says, from their race, talking about Israelites, mm -hmm. from their race came the Christ, came Jesus, right? That's the fulfillment of that promise. Through Jesus, a bridge has been built for the Gentiles to come back to God, right? And so that is why it's important for us to, um, to honor the Jews. Through them came the Messiah, who not just redeemed Israel, but redeemed the whole world, right? And, um, and you know, we, we talked a little bit Sunday about this, but, um, but one of the things that we should know is we're told to to pray for the peace of Israel. And I talked about the meaning of the word peace there. It's shalom. It's not just the absence of violence. Mm -hmm. When we pray for the peace of Israel, we're not praying just that bombs won't fall, missiles won't be shot, right? It's we're praying for this intimacy to come before, uh, to come between them and their God. That's what we're really yeah. praying. And that prayer is not just for them, right? Because there's some specific promises in the word of God about the Jews 
that when they come to that place of peace and intimacy, of shalom with, with, their, with their God, with Yahweh, which we would say that's found through Messiah, then that's good for the whole world, mm-hmm. right? We're, we're told that. So, and that's, that's again in, in uh, well, that's in Romans 11. And actually, if, if, we, um, if we can, I'd like to. Go ahead. I'd like to actually read that passage. We so, can. So verse 12, right? Um, 11 verse 12, it says, So I ask, speaking of, the Is- of Israel, did they stumble in order that they might fall? By no means, Paul says. Rather, through their trespass, salvation has come to the Gentiles. We have salvation because they stumble. And then he says, so as to make Israel jealous. Then he says, now if their trespass means riches for the world, what will, what, uh, and if their failure means riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean? Well, then he answers that question. If you turn over to verse 15, he says, for if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead, but resurrection? And isn't that kind of what we're all waiting on, right? We're all waiting for this moment when resurrection happens. Well, Paul specifically ties it to their full acceptance, Whew. right? Yeah. And so praying for the peace of Israel isn't just paying, praying for Israel, is it? It's actually praying for us. It's yeah. actually praying for the Palestinians. It's actually praying for the Arab world. It's praying for everyone because their acceptance means resurrection, resurrection life. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's good. And, and, and you also have this verse from Matthew chapter 23, right? Because, I mean, what we're doing is we're trying to, we're trying to establish the importance of Jews, mm-hmm. their importance. And so we all know, we all know that Jesus entered into, the, into Jerusalem, the triumphal entry, you know. And, uh, On a donkey. That's right. They're singing Psalms 18, blessed is, uh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, right? Mm-hmm. But here's what happens when he leaves Jerusalem. He says this in Matthew 23, 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing. And then he says this, see, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say. Now, who is the you in that passage? Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and its inhabitants, the Jews. And he says, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It's important that they meet their Messiah on a global level. On an entirely global level, it's important that they come to know their their Messiah. Now, here's what's important. We should talk eventually about a spiritual spiritual enemy, right? It's easy to watch the news, and if you're on, say, our side of the aisle, then the Palestinians are the enemy. Sure. Sure. But as believers, that's not true, right? right? Because we're told something completely different. Um, we're told that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the powers, right. against spiritual forces in heavenly places. That's our enemy. So why the Holocaust? Well, we just read that it's important that Jews recognize their Messiah. Well, it's, it's estimated that in Europe, before the Holocaust, 250,000 Messianic Jews. That's a good start to ending in this passage where you have Jews on a, on a, a large scale saying, blessed to see who comes in the name of the Lord. What better reason for an enemy to wipe them out mm-hmm. but to delay resurrection? Because what does resurrection spell for our enemy? It's over. It's over. And what I mean our spiritual enemy. Yeah. It's over. And so what better way to delay that than to kill a quarter million messianic believers, right? And, and so all of this is telling us it's important for us to pray for these people, for this people group. It's important. Uh, and to support them, like you said, and, and we do in several ways. But um, these things are important, um, you know, and it's, it's not just, um, you know, this is what we believe. This is what the Word of God says. Yeah. This, these are things that are said, Right. Yeah. And so if most of your beliefs is driven based off what you see on the news, <laughs> you're going to have some messed up beliefs. Oh, absolutely. Because um, right. you and I talked about this the other day. 
there's a portion of our news, even our local news here, talks about how they worded it in such a way, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, like like Israel's the savage here, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and globally, the global news, like, is Israel's the enemy, mm-hmm. not not the Palestinians. Palestinians aren't our enemy, but not Hamas, you know. Right. It's, um, it's, man, what they've done to the Palestinian people, right? And uh, I love what you said, too, because... If we're if we watch the news a lot, it, we got to be careful because then Palestinians become the enemy. Mm-hmm. Palestinians are not our enemy. That's right. Um, Hamas really isn't either. It's who they're under the influence of. That's right. Right. And so understanding that, and understanding the importance of praying, like praying for this, this should give you intentionality to pray. Like we did on Sunday, we took a whole service Sunday, and we just. We prayed. You did, you know, ten minute elevator speech on some of this, um, but really, we just we prayed and we bombarded the throne of God um, with this whole situation. A lot of people. I was looking in our congregation. A lot of people are just kind of like, I don't really know what's going on in the importance of this. Hearing everything you just said, like I hope somebody just leaned in and said, okay. I I need to read up on this. I need to study this. Not just that, but even something I'm personally convicted for is like, hey, not don't just read the Bible. Like, read it through the right lens, yeah. the right way, um, because it'll shape. If you're not careful, what somebody teaches or the way you interpret Scripture, it'll shape the way that you believe, and it couldn't be accurate. You know, like I preached. Isaiah, or I'm sorry, Ezekiel 37, mm-hmm. with nothing to do with Jewish people before. Right. Yep. Um, and, you know, and, and I went looking to this weekend. Um, there's a lot of churches that didn't even mention what's happening here. And we play a role in this. Like, there, this is important to us, mm-hmm. even though we're 10,000 miles away or, or whatever we are. Like, this is important. I think looking uh, through the lens of scripture at this whole thing is it really, sh- it makes it actually, it makes it more exciting. You know, yeah. it, it makes it like, Oh God, you're about to do something. You are doing something, but you're about to really do something mm-hmm. that can only be explained by you. Right. And, uh, and then it, it moves me to pray, to pray for Israel, to pray for Jerusalem, to pray for um, Jewish people to pray for the Palestinians, but even the most radical, like the, like, I'm sure there's a lot of people that's like, there's just no hope for Hamas. Mm-hmm. But there's like a part of me that's like praying, like, even if they murdered and killed, like, man, there is some Saul's in there yeah. that God's going to turn into Paul's. And so like, even praying for them, like I can see them with their little green bandana things on. I can literally see them while I drive and I pray, man, God, I just believe, you know, just believe God, even right now, somehow, some way. We talked about this before we jumped on on this too, man. Like, God, you're going to do something somehow, some way. Mm-hmm. The most broken, the most devastating place on the planet right now is such a incredible garden for God to do something and grow something. So how would you encourage us to um, to pray for Israel first? Okay. So you pray for the shalom. You pray for the peace of Israel. And then you pray with the understanding that that doesn't mean that Hamas goes away, that that doesn't mean that the war goes away, that it actually means they come into relationship with their father through Jesus Christ, through That's faith good. in Jesus Christ. That is the prayer. Um, and then... Because of the promise that we read, that we, we spoke about in Genesis 12, right? You you can actually pray that for Hamas and the Palestinians as well. You can actually pray that for Hezbollah and Lebanon as well. And I know there's a lot of um, patriotic people that would be sitting, maybe listening and going, disagreeing. What? 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 Why would you do that? But I would say because it's biblical. <laughs> because again we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And I would remind you that in spite of what some people say on the news when they call them animals and beasts, 
they're actually people. And that when Jesus hung on the cross, he hung on the cross for the thieves beside him, for his disciples in front of him, and for the Romans who were persecuting him. That's right. And killing him. He hung on the cross for all of those people. And so in our modern day world, that means Jesus hung on the cross for Israel. And that he hung on the cross for the Palestinians. And that he actually hung on the cross for Hamas and Hezbollah. For all of those people. And so we know that there are, and this is, the, this is a prayer that I had this morning in my, my personal time. We know that Palestine has groups of Christians. That's right. Christ, Christ-believing people. Um, and you can imagine that they're huddled together somewhere in Gaza. Yeah, somewhere they're getting together for they're sure. They're getting together because they don't really fit in. <laughs> you know, they certainly don't fit in with Hamas. They don't fit in with most Palestinians, at least religiously. And, of course, they're afraid of the IDF that, that um, might invade at any moment. So they're together. And I wonder what would happen if the church began to pray. And I'll try and do this without getting emotional. But if we actually started to pray that God would begin to inhabit their prayers, that like the day of Pentecost, that God would show up with a mighty rushing wind and that the sound would be heard all over Gaza, but it's not the missiles from the IDF, IDF, and it's not Hamas firing at Israel, but it's actually the Spirit of God coming to settle in a place and draw a crowd like it did on the day of Pentecost. Mm. And what if, what if they got there and saw something miraculous and something powerful? We believe that God is able. So why can't we ask that actually peace starts in Hamas, that shalom falls first in Hamas? Because what I just read from Romans 11 would actually say he preaches to the Gentiles. Paul preaches to the Gentiles to do what? To make Israel jealous. And what if from across the border, Israel goes, what is happening? What is happening? What are we missing out on? What is God doing there that we're missing out on? What if we just began to pray that revival broke out in Palestine right now? That's right. Like, is it impossible? I don't think it's impossible. No, it's, it's not. It's actually prime pickings for it. I, I think you so. Know? And I love it because <laughs> unlike an American revival, there's no social media plan pushing it. There's no big marketing advertising. Right. You know, there's, there's no, it's just real, like, let's get real about our faith, man. Right. I love it. I love that, that you challenge us to pray like that. And I can totally see it, man. And I, I've been, we've been talking about, we talked about it um, in, in London two weeks ago with, uh, with the Jags, man. Like, yeah, God's omnipresent. We know that. But when we start worshiping and we start praying, that manifest presence, manifest man. Manifest presence, and, yeah. and, and that can happen right there in Gaza. And so there will be a display of power, signs, wonders, miracles, man. And that will take a radical a, a radical Saul and put him on a road to Damascus where he right. has an encounter where he's like, um, I persecute people for believing in this dude. But in this moment, I respond to him as Lord, yeah. like Acts chapter nine. Yeah. Right. Right. He says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? <laughs> right. Yeah. Lord absolutely. was his Lord. response. Yeah. Immediately um, responding to the power of the presence of God. Absolutely. Dude, I can see it. Like, I can visualize it. I can see it in my head and uh, right now. And so, in Jesus' name, may it happen. Yeah. That would be an incredible thing to pray for, right? Because um, I know a lot of people are praying, man, Iraq doesn't get involved. I'm sorry, Iran doesn't get involved, that, um, that all the fighting will stop. Some of that's inevitable based off that's Scripture. Right. Yeah. It's like, no, let's, in the middle of... People die. Here, here's something that I think people need to hear. As Christians, we got to stop believing that our best life is right here. Mm. Our best life is really our next life. Mm-hmm. And so can everything get back to being comfortable? And I know that that like that's a that's a prayer a lot of people have. The more discomfort, I think the the, the more even we see it in Scripture, the more suffering like, man, the greater the revelation of Jesus. Yeah. And it's like, man, what if, what if God does? What if he already is? Right. I mean, there's just no way to get that to us right now mm-hmm. um, because of people's agendas. But what if even right now there's like a radical 
like revival breaking out. Exactly. You know? That's right. Yeah. That, I wonder if the news would stop covering that. I don't know, but it happened, right? It, it happened in the first century. Sure. When, when Paul and the Jews left Jerusalem, like revival broke out in all of these cities um, that we read about. Um, why can't it happen again? Why can't it happen today? Why can't that be the result of what happened, um, you know, a week ago? Why, why not? Yeah. Like, are we going to limit God to um, respond only in the way we think he should? Yeah. You know? Um, and for God to move this way for you sensationalist folks, this will, <laughs> this will challenge you, mm-hmm. you know, that, um, that as buildings are bombed, that, that Palestinian Christians are praying for kids that are dying and, and they're, they're being resurrected, that there'll be some Lazarus on the, on the Gaza Strip, man. Right. Like that's... Like what if, dude? Yeah. Like what if? Yeah. Right? And so man. I I get excited about that. And uh, and so so we know, like the psalmist says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for Israel. And, but we also, I appreciate you bringing clarity to the shalom. We're not just talking about let everything get comfortable for them again. Uh, no, but not at all. For for the peace of of the shalom of like I'm right with my Messiah now. That's right. And yeah. I receive him. Yeah. And I'm in relationship. So whether I die or live, yeah. You know, like yeah. I am with Christ. I'm one with him. That's right. You read in uh, I believe it's Zechariah twelve, you know, where it says, you know, pour out a spirit of grace mm-hmm. so that there will be pleas of mercy. And that's that's what we're we're praying that they would cry out, please, for mercy. You know, it's the same passage where it says they'll, they'll uh, mourn over the one whom they pierced. One day, the Bible tells us they're going to wake up to this. Why can't it be now? Yeah. Why can't it be right now? That's right. And there, there's a day that the house of Abraham that's divided will be divided no more. Right. And uh, that's the beauty of our message, man. Mm-hmm. You got anything else you want to throw at us? I mean, I could do a lot, but I know we got we got some time. We got uh, we got a time limit, so I mean that that kind of sums up where we're at right now. I think. I mean, we we want the peace of Israel because it brings peace to the whole world, and again, it's that shalom peace, that yeah. um, that fullness with with the with the Lord yeah. through the Messiah. So we we pray it for Israel, but we pray it also on Palestine. We pray it on our own country. We yeah. pray it for across the world that there will be awakening to this this um, this wonderful Messiah we serve. And remember this, too, with Iran obviously playing a big role in all of this. Iran has, if not the biggest, the second biggest behind China underground church in the world, man. Mm -hmm. And there is thousands upon thousands of believers in Iran that are in hiding, that are under persecution, that are um, even right now, like living in the... uh, in the backyard of, of, of a state that is satanically influenced. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, and I'm not scared to say that, but man, pray for them too, man, because if this continues to escalate, like they're going to have some really important, uh, evangelism days. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think they'll use tracks and go door to door, but God's going to use them yeah. in a significant way. Right. In Jesus. Name. Yeah. So the same thing we've prayed, we're, we're, we're suggesting that we pray for Palestine. It could be, true in Iran as well, um, that revival breaks out among these nations and that people come to know the one true God, right? The, the only one worthy of worship. Um, and it could happen there as well. Why not pray for it? Why not ask for it? So as your pastor and the elder and pastor of the church, we encourage you guys to, um, to pray every single day and just allow, allow the Holy Spirit, invite him to just have things cross your mind to remind you to pray. And it, it's my prayer that you will see small children, you'll see women, you'll see men, you'll see soldiers, you'll see Hamas. You'll see people in your mind and it'll it'll cause you to pray and to pray for them to encounter Yeshua for um, for a revival, a real revival, one you don't have to sell tickets for, um, one you don't have to book a big venue for, one you don't have to put a marketing campaign together on social media for, but one that just happens like Acts chapter two, upper room, just like you said, Adam, just the wind of God, just yeah. just the Holy Spirit to flow through that area and just completely shatter the demonic stronghold um, on people. And uh, and may God get all the glory and yeah. all the honor for it in Jesus name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thanks for tuning in to the Bold City Podcast. 
To learn more about us, visit us at boldcity.church or download the Bold City Church app. To support this ministry and help us continue to reach people all around the world, visit boldcity.church give.